Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. So this week we're going to be working on a Sega Genesis, and this is one of those classic yard sale finds, as you guys can see. <laughs> you know, this thing got a lot of love, but it hasn't been used in a very long time, and it now has a bunch of problems. So one thing is that it just simply doesn't turn on. If you plug it in and try to power it on, nothing happens. Uh, you can also see that the reset button is permanently fixed down like this, so i got to figure out what's going on there. It's got a nice coating of dust, and it's this kind of dust that just does not come off easily, not without a fight. <laughs> so we're going to restore this thing. And uh, so yeah, what we're going to do today is we're going to totally refurbish this, get all the dirt out, get it working, replace all the capacitors as a preventative measure. And then once all that's done, we're going to upgrade this thing so that it looks better than it ever did. And so specifically what I'm going to do is add the triple bypass mod. This is a mod that was created by Tian Fang and many others. And what it does is it brings out the best possible video and audio from your Sega Genesis. And you can install it on all models, but I think out of all of them, the Model 2s benefit the most from doing this mod. All right, so let's get to it. All right, so I've gone ahead and disassembled the Sega Genesis, and <clears throat> it's something I wasn't going to bother covering because really all you need is just a little bit of time and a Phillips screwdriver, and you can totally take one of these things apart, no big deal. Um, so yeah, looking inside, it looks like no one's ever been in here before. It looks pretty clean. So even though the outside was dirty, you know, the inside is really not that bad. Um, so I don't really think I'm going to do much apart from maybe just brush the dust off of the PCB, um, but I am going to clean the shell because the shell is dirty. So I'll go ahead and show you guys how I do that. Okay, so while the plastics are drying off, <clears throat> let's turn our attention to the Genesis and get it working again. So, um, the first thing you want to do if you've got a Genesis Model 2 that doesn't have power is start at the power jack and take a look at it. And, I mean, hopefully this is coming up clearly in on camera. I might just actually zoom in a little bit here. But yeah, if you take a look here, you can see the problem right then and there. So there is a massive crack in the solder on the power jack. This is a very common problem with Sega Genesis Model 2s. I don't know if it's the type of solder they used or whether it just doesn't stick to the metal of the jack, but they all go bad like this. Thankfully, this is super easy to fix. All you need to do is just reflow all three of these joints and apply a pretty generous amount of solder to it. And just give it a little time to dry off. So one of these is ground, one of these is your voltage coming off the power brick. And you can see I just added a lot of solder and just gave it some time. And now this thing is reflowed. I'm not going to bother reflowing this one because of the triple bypass mod. Um, but let's go ahead and power it on and see if it works. All right, so I've got power and uh, the AV cord plugged in. Let's just go ahead and give it a test. And there we go. Not surprised. All right, so it looks like this console is working. I'm gonna do a few more tests though off camera just to be sure. So I've gotta test the control ports. I'm gonna try it with the Sega CD and 32X add-ons, um, even some Master System games, just to give it a full run of tests, just to make sure that this thing is fully functional. It probably is, but I'm not going to you know, take any assumptions on that. Once I do that, we're gonna come back and we're gonna go ahead and start replacing the capacitors on this console. All right, so now let's go ahead and replace all the caps. I tested the console and everything does seem to be working perfectly now. Um, so first I just wanted to talk about what types of caps that Sega use. So sometimes Sega uses really crappy caps on consoles, but in this case they didn't. They used Rubicons and these are actually really high quality. I'll bet you if I tested the capacitance on all of these that they'd be just fine. That being said, there's nothing wrong with changing the caps either. It's just a preventative maintenance kind of thing and I'm gonna re be replacing them with, you know, also with high quality caps. So <clears throat> with the uh, Model 2, you'll notice that sometimes, um, like this particular board here, you see if you look at the top here, there's actually no vias on the top. So this cap is only connected on the bottom. And I'll just flip that over to demonstrate. You can see right here. So these are the two pads connecting that cap into the board. Um, 
what I found is that replacing these caps can be kind of annoying because the um, the pads are only on one side, so that means that if you put too much mechanical force on them, they tend to lift. Um, and then also Sega, when they put these in at the factory, they bent these leads, you know, very far. Um, and, and that's not bad. It just makes really good contact with the pad. But it means that desoldering it is an extra bit of challenge. So on a board like this, what I like to do is actually just cut the legs off the caps because there's enough height to do that. Just like that. And now what I'm going to do is just flip over on the other side. And I have a pair of tweezers here with very fine tips. You can use that to actually grab the lead and at the very least dislodge it from where it is. Makes it much easier. There we go. And I can you can just pull it out with your tweezers just like I did there. Um, so I find this to be a little bit easier to deal with these capacitors because um, if you do the typical thing, like use a desoldering gun and, and just try to bend the leads, it's very easy to pull these traces. And so just out of being extra cautious, I, I do things this way with Model 2s, even though it does mean that the, decap, the, the recap process is a bit slower. Um, but it always works, and I don't have any problems with, you know, torn traces that way. So I'm going to go ahead and replace all the caps on this board. I'm not going to bother showing you guys because it's very repetitive and boring. Um... But all that being said, just you want to make sure that you match the capacitance. So this is a 10 microfarad 50 volts from Nichicon, and it's going to be replacing a 10 microfarad 50 volts. So I'm going to go ahead and take care of that, and then we'll be back in a minute with a fully recapped board. Okay, so I've gone ahead and removed all of the capacitors and replaced them with new Nichicon capacitors, and everything's looking good here. Um, however, you will notice in this section of the board that there's about eight or so capacitors that I didn't bother to replace. That's because these need to be removed anyway as part of the triple bypass mod. Um, so if you want to take a look, you can just pause the video, and that'll allow you to figure out which electrolytics you need to pull out. So you do this to sever the original audio um, out of circuit so that it doesn't get to the multi-out over here. Um, I'm not quite done yet though. There are a few surface mount components that need to be replaced. So specifically this little component right here, this little resistor here needs to be removed. And then I've got these two resistors here to remove. And then finally, these two. Now, when I remove these two, I also need to replace them with a piece of wire or a solder bridge to connect these pads together. So it's going to go straight from the chip down here and, and on to the next place from there. Um, all right, so I'm going to go ahead and do that, and then that will fully sever the audio circuit. Okay, so you can see that we've got our solder bridges over here where these two resistors were, and then these two guys are removed, and this final resistor here. So the audio section is all set. Let's go ahead and now move over to this RGB encoder chip. And so <clears throat> the next thing we've got to do is we've got to disconnect RGB um, so that it's completely isolated from the multi-out. The easiest way to do that is right here at the RGB encoder. So you've got three pins right over here. So this one, this one, and this one, they're all right next to each other. So this is the RGB out that's going to the multi-out. So to disconnect these, all you've got to do is just use a little pick, like uh, the one that I have right here. And all you got to do is just tuck your hook underneath each pin and then heat up the pads, and you can lift these guys and disconnect them from circuit. Okay, so RGB is disconnected and audio is now disconnected. All right, so now we're ready to install the triple bypass board itself. <clears throat> Before doing so, what you need to do first is set a series of jumpers on this board to match the model of Sega Genesis that you're trying to do this with. So this is a VA1 Model 2 Genesis. And if you flip over the board on the silk screen, there's actually a list of jumper settings, and so you just have to match this up to the version of the console that you're doing this with. 
So I already did that. And so this is a VA1. So I've got model two jumpered. And then these three points are also jumpered. So now that that's all finished, we're gonna go ahead and install it right here on top of the multi-out. I did a little bit of trimming to get it onto the multi-out. So I trimmed these two anchors for the port. I'm gonna trim this one as well, just to get them all flush. Sometimes you may want to or need to trim these as well, but mine are pretty decent, pretty low. And so this is actually a pretty critical step and easy to make a mistake with. Um, the reason is that you might think it's soldered in place, but then it's actually not making contact with these pins. So I'm actually using a very fine uh, solder tip and I'm gonna leave it inside of these vias for a lot longer than I normally would, just to make extra sure that everything is actually connected up. Okay, so the next thing we've got to do is wire up our source for sync and then R, G, and B. So uh, to do that, we need to scrape away some of the solder mask that's on the board and expose the copper in a few different places. So our source for sync is actually right over here, so we're going to scrape this off. And then there's three little vias right over here and these are R, G, and B, respectively. So I'm gonna show you how I do this. Normally I do this under magnification because uh, you don't wanna cut uh, traces or damage anything else. You just wanna scrape away the solder mask on the via that you care about. I'm gonna do this one by eye just because it's isolated and I'm probably gonna be fine by doing that. But you just take a fiberglass pen or a, or a scalpel like what I have here and you just very carefully scrape away at that area until you get nice shiny copper. Okay, <clears throat> so hopefully you can see on camera that that little via is nice and shiny. And then you wanna test by adding some solder to it to see if it sticks. Well, it looks like it kinda does. I think I need to do a little bit more work here. Um, but hopefully you get the idea of what I do. And normally, again, like I said, I do this under a magnifying of some a magnification of some kind, like a microscope. Um, you could also use a magnifying lens because it's just much easier to do this kind of work and you can really gauge your progress that much better. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. I'm going to scrape away those four trace, those four vias, like I said. And once that's done, we're going to go ahead and solder in the wires and then I'll explain what I'm doing next. Alright, so we've got our uh, R, G, and B installed, and you can see that here's those vias right here. And then we've got our sync line connected right over here. It's a little hard to see because it's underneath the, the wires here, but it's right there. And um, you'll notice I made a point of curving these wires out of the way. And the reason why is that there's a, like a plastic bracket that goes right here over the cartridge slot. So you don't want to have your wires going anywhere near here because they'll get crushed by that plastic um, component when you go ahead and reassemble the console. Okay, so we are actually almost done. Um, so right now we just have seven or so more wires to connect up. So we have the Genesis sound, left and right channel, Sega CD, left and right channel, 32X, left and right channel, and then PSG, which is used for master system. So five of those signals can be tapped right here on the back, and then there are two, which is the Genesis left and right channel audio. We're gonna tap those over here at, uh, at this point right here, those surface mount resistors that we removed. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that, and then um, I'll just show you the final work.
right, so all the work is finished and I'm just gonna show you guys what I did. So this is left channel Genesis audio and this is right channel. And then if we flip over, like I said, most of the other signals are coming from this side of the board. So um, we've got you know 32X, Sega CD, and PSG for the center. And then here's um, you know Sega CD and 32X for the right channel. So now we've got all of our signals wired in. So let's go ahead and plug this thing back in and give it a quick test. Okay, so I've got the Genesis plugged in and we're ready for a quick test. Um, before I do that though, I just wanted to kind of show you the final product of cleaning the shell. And you can see it looks way, way nicer now after having gone through that deep cleaning. Um, so yeah, I think we're ready to go. Let's go ahead and turn this thing on and see what happens. All right, that's what I'm talking about. That looks really nice. So once you do the triple bypass, you can notice like right away that um, it's really crisp. The colors really pop, everything looks excellent, and it sounds correct too. So I think this is one of the biggest things with the Model 2 Genesis, is that the sound is just um, not right with a lot of different models. Um, so yeah, I'm going to go ahead and test this thing out now. So I need to test Sega Genesis, Sega Master System, Sega CD, and 32X, and I just got to make sure all of that stuff is functioning properly, and uh, it probably is, and then I'll call this one all finished. All right, so that's it for this uh, this week's video. If you guys like this kind of content, then consider subscribing to the channel. I have videos out like this every week um, on Fridays, and then if you guys have any consoles that you need repaired or modified, you can always contact me directly at oneuprestorations.com. All right, guys, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next week. Bye.